Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maximo and I'm here checking out GRIP. The logo actually works the same way upside down, it's kind of neat. So, if you're familiar with the PlayStation 1, and by familiar I mean in-depthly familiar and not just, you know, I owned it when I was a kid. You might, actually to be fair, you might be aware of it too, but well, we'll see. So, you might be aware of a duology of racing games, I was about to say a series, but it never got past a duology called Roll Cage. It was a game where cars with wheels as thick as their bodies were able to race both right way up and upside down and on walls and what have you. And Grip basically exists as a spiritual successor to that idea. It's not made by the same people as far as I'm aware, but at the same time it's very very clearly trying to be the next Roll Cage. It even has, it, like I believe back when this game was first announced, it was said to be a Roll Cage-like game. So, we've got multiplayer and single-player modes. I haven't played very much of either of these outside of the car core mode. And multiplayer, every time I've tried, there hasn't been anyone on. So, you know, it's kind of unfortunate. And considering it's a PC game, unless it's the very, 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 very top of a PC game, it will probably not survive past six months. That's just how things are. But notably, there are actually there is actually split-screen multiplayer. So, points for that. That's actually a really cool feature for a game on PC. This is also on PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. So, yeah, you can play it there as much as you like. Let's go and have a look at the settings. There's a fair few, including one that's kind of annoying, called Forward Facing Crash Camera. Very hard to say that three times fast. You've also got plenty of other things here, including your split screen layout, which is nice. You've got plenty of PC-related settings here, including your maximum frames per second and v-sync, and all your quality levels over there. I have got motion blur down to maximum, I probably could turn down sharpening as well, but uh, the game looks fine with it turned up, and resolution scale, which is nice. You can turn that all the way down and get it running on pretty much anything, I imagine, with a, you know, at least a dedicated GPU in it. You can turn some music tracks on and off, which is probably a good idea because I've mainly been hearing the same two tracks over and over again. It's annoying the shit out of me. And you can also come here to rebind your controls or check what the controls here are for controllers. How many times am I going to say control in this video? And you can see that there is a bunch of little controls here that are nice. Not all of them are replicated on the controller, unfortunately, but oh well, not much you can do. Limited amount of buttons. So we've got the campaign that we can go play. I'm currently up to tier 5, yes, and I also have a level of 12. And what levels do is unlock new things for you. So you can come here to change your colour of your paint. You can add some extra different kinds of paint. You can also change some decals. And you can also change your tyres. The higher level you are, the more stuff you unlock. You can also unlock brand new cars. And there are plenty of cars. Thankfully, it appears that most of the cars are almost identical. Some people might not like this, some people will like this. But at the same time, it means that you don't have to worry about going through 17 levels worth of experience to unlock the best cars. So, whatever. It's fine by me. So if we just hit Y to save, we can come back to the campaigns. And you can see that we have a bunch of different campaigns going up coming going on here basically the idea is that you need to place a certain point in the tournament in order to move on to the next tournament then the next one then at the very end you'll be given a duel a head-to-head -head race with another character that you've been building up a rivalry with over the past few tournaments and once you've done that you move on to the next tier it's all very simple and we're not actually going to do that this time because the thing about the campaigns is that you need to do each particular, like, just as an example here, Speed Demon times 3. That Speed Demon is basically a race with no weapon pickups. It's only boosting. God almighty, I'm bad with the speech today. But yes, you can see that there's another one over there, Classic Race, which is just, um, brain work with me here. It, classic Race is just, uh, regular old racing. Ultimate Race, which is, actually, no, we might as well just go on go to the single player modes because we can see the descriptions of them right here. 
Classic race, come first to win. Ultimate race, come first to win, but you get bonus points for damaging dudes. Elimination race, everyone, the person who's in last gets eliminated every 30 seconds. Speed Demon, which is just flat out boost only racing and time trials. There's no time trials in the campaign so far, as far as I'm aware. You do also have head-to-head -head deathmatch, although by head-to-head -head I mean with like eight people. And Car Core, which is basically this game trying to embrace a sort of Trackmania style of things, but we'll get to that. So we'll play a classic race. Unfortunately, there's no like random track, so I guess we'll just pick Al Al Hatra Al Hatra Wastes. Good lord, I can't speak today. And of course you can change things like the laps, the speed class, the difficulty, the AI, whether or not you want pickups or not, and even if the track is mirrored, those are all very nice things to have. So we'll just leave it all like that and we'll go straight to the race. This is an i7A 700K and an RTX 2080. I've been playing with everything maxed out and I haven't noticed any performance issues whatsoever. So at least the game's well optimized. So away we go. This is, I really need to turn off my bloody, um, people are doing shit icons on Steam. So this is Grip. It is, as I said before, a roll cage successor. That means you can ride up on walls sometimes, except not all the time, because we don't actually have any walls. I see, but a wall there now, we can ride up on it. Hooray! And we can ride on the roof, and the camera just goes absolutely nuts because it can't keep up with us. Woo! Yeah, it's one of those games. There are some extra mechanics to be aware of, of course. You have the ability to boost on the Y button. I am playing this on an Xbox 360 pad. Notably, despite the fact that the game says it supports PS4 pads, and the fact that I had a PS4 pad plugged in with PS4 icons turned on, for whatever damn reason, I couldn't for the life of me actually get my PS4 pad to work. I'm not entirely sure why. I had it plugged in, and the last couple of games I've played that have supported the PS4 pad have worked fine with it. But, well, whatever. But yeah, this is Grid. It is a kart racer, and that means it's got a few special power-ups at hand. But we might as well talk about some other stuff first before I start whining about everything. I know people hate it when I whine about shit, but I have a lot of really small niggles with this game that really build up over time. But for now, let's talk about what's good about this game. It gives you a real sense of speed. I'll give them that much. It's not as good as the original Roll Cage's sense of speed. It might be because those tracks were really simple and so... Oh, for fuck's sake. It, it might be because those, those tracks were really simple and with the simple polygonal graphics, it might have been easier to emphasize the sense of speed on that one. But in this case, they really do give you a sense of speed. It does take a while to show up though, because in the campaign mode, you only start with uh, low speed. And when you only start with low speed, it makes the game feel kind of sluggish. And combine that with the fact that I don't actually like use weapon pickups until like the second set of tournaments. And it can be a pretty slow start, but once you get to the normal speed, everything suddenly starts feeling a hell of a lot better. So yeah, sense of speed, check. What about the environments? Well, the environments are actually very pretty. Like, you can tell just by looking at them. They're big, they're colourful, they've got plenty of effects going on, and it runs really well. As I said, I'm running this on an RTX 2080, and, uh, i7A700K, so you'd hope I can run this pretty well, and I can, thankfully. Not much in the way of performance issues here, and everything really does look rather nice. It all scans out pretty well. My only downside is that some of the walls are pretty hard to see coming, but it's not that big of an issue in the, in the grand scheme of things compared to all the other problems I have. Controlling your car is 90% pretty good. Oh god, okay. Yeah, this must be one uh, <laughs> this must be the first place power up. Oh dear, they're all right behind me. Controlling your car for the most part feels pretty good. Now most of the cars in this game feel identical. They they do have some stat differences, and it, it's not like you're not going to be able to notice the different acceleration rates of like certain cars, for example. That is absolutely a thing that happens in this game seeing the cars have their different acceleration rates. But for the most part, they really do feel the same to drive, and they don't seem that massively different in the grand scheme. I'm just throwing out that bloody shield, because 
I've been passing through so many pickups which might potentially give me a boost, but for whatever reason, I'm just holding on to these two bloody things. And here comes the bloody thing I needed to shield for 10 seconds after I let it go. Fantastic. And of course, I fucked this up again because, god damn it, me. This camera doesn't help matters. Right. But yes, for the most part, controlling your car is perfectly fine. The steering feels on point. When you're going really fast, everything tends to understeer, which to be fair makes sense, that's kind of the point. And when you when you let off the accelerator to either gain some control in the air, or to... Huh. Okay, I guess I'll get a little bit of a benefit from this one, nice. Cool. Right. So yeah, when you let go of your accelerator in order to make a sharp turn, things suddenly start feeling a bit better. So, controlling the car for the most part makes sense. So you get some XP for doing the race, and when you level up, you get your shit. It's all pretty good. Nothing wrong with all of that stuff. So let's, uh, let's swap planets. There we go. So uh, we'll go with... Uh, no, we don't want to go speed bowl, because that's a boring course. We'll go with uh, transport. Uh, do we, uh, we'll pull the engine power up to while. We'll see how well that works. So I guess it's time to get on to the complaints. So for those of you who follow me around like a war, which is probably like, you know, two of you. There are a couple of things that I can reference that might be of relevance to you. So, this game reminds me of a lot of a game called Redout. Redout is another futuristic racer, but it's definitely more Wipeout than it is, uh, like, Roll Cage. And the deal with that is, with Redout, that game was fantastic up until around the halfway point in its campaign. The problem with it halfway through its campaign is that the AI would become ridiculously aggressive and the collision the collision engine like the way that the game determines who wins in an outright collision always benefited the AI now in this game it isn't so bad because the enemy AI isn't ridiculously aggressive with trying to bash your head in but at the same time the problem with it is that Whenever they do collide with you, they will always win. If you smash into an enemy, you won't move him under the best of circumstances. If you smash into an enemy deliberately, I should say. If you don't smash into an enemy and they smash into you, they will likely send you for a goddamn loop. And it will happen almost every time it's incredibly frustrating, it's almost unavoidable, and it really makes you hate the game. Especially when it happens at the end of a race, because, well... There are pickups, and it is basically like a realistic, not realistic, futuristic version of Mario Kart where you can drive on the roof. There are some things that can happen in this game that are very similar to that situation. So, just as an example, there are weapons. And I haven't gone on to them yet. You can carry two at a time and you use both of them via the LB or the RB buttons. It's a bit weird having it on RB, mainly because if it's on RB, that means you have to reach like a thumb up to reach it if you don't want to let go of the accelerator, which is a little bizarre. But, you know, whatever. If you want two weapon pickups, I suppose that's the way you'd go about it. The problem with most of the weapons is that they suck. And except when they don't. It's, it's a little bit bizarre. So let's go over what weapons I've seen so far in the game. There's been a few. The major weapons that I'm really concerned about are the Hydra and the... It's called like the Scorpion or something. I don't know exactly what it's called, but I, I keep forgetting the bloody names. So the weapons, the Hydra and the Scorpion, they're the two most common weapons you'll see throughout the early stages of the game. And the problem with them is that they both fucking suck. 
the problem with them is that they both launch incredibly slowly for a game of this speed, and then when they do, their lock-on is basically up to the hands of fate and whether or not God's in a good mood that day. You probably don't stand a chance of actually hitting anything if the stars aren't aligned. Like, see how there was that little green diamond? That was the your shot should be aligned diamond. But for whatever reason, the shot did not just go through. With the homie weapons in this game, you need to be locked on, you need to be in a straight line with no curves in the future, and you need to not have any sort of height variances in the terrain whatsoever. If there is any height variance in the terrain whatsoever, if it ducks down or up in any way, you will more likely shoot yourself with a missile when you fire it, rather than the enemy. The missile will come out below you for some reason, and I don't understand why. It'll ream into you, and it'll act like you got hit with a missile, and it'll throw you off course. This happens almost every time. If, if you aren't fucking careful with how you use your damn missiles, you will just blow yourself up with them. And it is ridiculous, because there is a homing missile that automatically searches for the player in first place, and it is way better. You are way more likely to hit your target with that missile in particular. So why, under this circumstance, the homing is so bad for the regular old Stinger, I don't know. The homing for the Hydra is even worse. It takes so long to come out of your car, and even longer to actually fire out in front of you. And when it does, it will go forward so slowly that you don't stand a chance of hitting anything. It's really frustrating when you get a Hydra because you know for a fact that there is zero chance that you'll be able to actually influence it hitting anything. So you wait until you've got like four dudes in front of you, then you fire and hope the best. That is the best way to use the Hydra because the lock-on for it is just retarded. I do not know why. So this is Ultimate Race. It's literally just the same as a regular race. But, as I said before, if you hit enemies, you'll get extra points, and your rank will also give you extra points. And, you know, the winner is the person who has the most points in the end of the day. The other weapons aren't so great. We, as I said earlier, I already mentioned the homing missile. There's the... Uh, the chain gun cannon, it's called the Raptor or something. And if you get hit by the Raptor, it's actually really, uh, what's the word? Um, it's not indecisive. Inconsistent, that's the word I'm looking for. So, you can lock on and fire with this weapon. And you'll go from spinning wreck, you you'll go from driving normally to spinning wreck, in no time at all when you get hit by the Raptor. The Raptor's homing is way better than the bloody homing missile and it's actually way more effective in actually taking something out. So I'm not entirely sure why the Raptor chain gun ends up being better than the actual missile. When you've got the Raptor, when you've got the missile, when you get hit by it, it's just one hit. Like it's fine. But when you're getting hit by the Raptor, it's way more dangerous because you don't know whether or not you're going to get hit with enough bullets in order to actually in order to actually get spun out, which is horrendously frustrating. Fucking time power up shit. Oh, this is the uh, missile that seeks out the person in the first place. It is actually possible to blow yourself up with that missile too, it's just a lot less likely because its homing is way better. It gets off the ground and it stays away from the walls, unlike the other missile for no reason whatsoever, but... Yeah. And then there is just some weird shit that the game's got going on. Some of the walls are inconsistent with the way they act with the physics. Most are okay, but some aren't. I believe there is something you're not meant to be able to drive up on in the first place. And if you somehow manage to get up on them, because I do believe the game treats every wall as a vulnerable wall, even ones that really shouldn't be. I believe that if that happens... 
Bloody hell. I believe that if that happens, there are some walls that will not react consistently. Sometimes you'll be able to drive up them and sometimes you won't be able to. And it's the times that when you won't, will come back and bite you in the arse. It makes the, it makes the level designs feel a bit unpolished, especially in certain situations where it looks like you can hop on a path for a shortcut, and there are multiple different routes and paths at every stage. So, it makes things interesting. Didn't say good, I said interesting. But there are some paths that you can hop onto that look like shortcuts, but they will immediately put you back on the path, and they will respawn you, and you will probably be behind everybody else. And see what I mean about the Hydra taking really long to deploy? It looked like it logged onto that dude, but it sure, sure as hell wasn't. But yeah, it makes some of the tracks feel inconsistent. Sometimes you'll be able to bounce off surfaces like that, sometimes they'll stop you dead. Sometimes you'll be able to go over and jump or hit a shortcut just fine at a certain speed, but the next time you'll just go right below it. You can do a manual launch by holding the A button, but you really shouldn't, unless it's something that you can like actively get on the roof for. And there are times you'll want to get on the roof. Of a, of a track because it will have like boosters up there or just something along those lines, you know? The tracks themselves are, well to be fair, they're not bad, but they're also not really that interesting. Like there are a couple of neat things about some of them, like the lightning towers in some areas and the whole, um, the lightning towers in some areas and you know, the whole riding on the roof half the time is an interesting thing, but at the same time, it can get really annoying. Of course, I get time slowed down on up in the bloody air. But it can get annoying having to run a course where you can't actually run on the roof for a bit. This happens a lot. You would think that if they were so focused on having courses that would let you drive on the roof a lot, they wouldn't have areas that are just wide open for half the lap. It feels a bit strange. The, the courses are okay, but I'd be lying if I said that any of them were particularly memorable. Not that much in the way of particularly interesting level design going on here, except for shit like that where you end up just running into the tiniest little rock and it sends you flying for 10 seconds, which can and will get you killed in the standings. So, yeah, it's uh, not, not particularly great. And I am also going to complain about the game's camera. Now, to be fair, it is kind of hard to make a proper camera for, the, for this sort of game where you're riding up on the roof all the bloody time and you need to be able to compensate for someone deciding to go on the on the roof at a moment's notice. I can absolutely get why that would be a absolutely massive pain in the ass to actually pull off. But I gotta say, it has the annoying tendency to screw up massively when the game slows down. When you run into a wall or something, the camera starts to disconnect from you, and it starts spinning all over the place, and half the time, like, it's said in the options that it's a forward-facing uh, crash camera or whatever, right? It's said that it's supposed to be that. It said that. But it sure isn't. It goes all over the place. It picks wherever the hell it wants to be. And it is impossible to find your way forward. Especially when you are already facing forward, but you need to get around like a wall or something. At least if you're facing the exact wrong way, a big gigantic exclamation mark that says wrong way will pop up in the middle of the screen and let you figure out whether or not you need to turn around. But if you're like parallel with a wall in front of you or something, the camera's going absolutely nuts and it's making you feel a bit motion sick. I play a lot of VR stuff and none of that makes me motion sick, but this fucking game... This fucking game will just beat the shit out of you. If you are just... Why am I... Why am I... 
fucking this up so badly. I'm never this fucking bad at this game, but of course as soon as I turn the camera on, I'm a complete and incompetent nitwit. But, yeah, when you're stuck against the wall, there's a bloody, the bloody camera is just flying all over the place and you're trying to get your bearings again. It is bad, dude. It is really, really bad. Like, motion sickness inducing bad. Like, this entire game isn't great from the get-go for, for that, but in the sense that when you stop dead, yeah, you're gonna get your shit kicked in. And it's gonna suck. Just because of how fast it all spins around and shit. It's really frustrating. The AI always wins collisions. The AI always wins collisions. Even if they even if they're flying through the air and you clip their wheel, that is probably going to be enough to make it so that you end up flipping out yourself. It's it's really frustrating. It's the same problem I have with Red Air, and it's the it's another problem that's really making me dislike this game as well. I also want to bring up the music. It's not terrible, but you can't bloody hear it half the time. The game's aud uh, default audio mix is so biased towards the engine noises of the cars that most of the time, if you're hearing any sort of music whatsoever, It'll be like a mo uh, one of the major beats of the song. Like, you'll hear like one instrument and that'll be it. The rest will be just bloody silent under the default sound mix. It's really bizarre. Also, as I said, I had this annoying tendency to come across the same, like, two or three songs. And of course, since I'm in the back, I'm gonna get bloody sideswiped by everybody. There we go again. Next to no warning that's going to happen. I, I don't actually have my sound on right now. You get a bit of a warning if you've got your sound on that is coming, but at the same time, if someone fires off a hydra right behind you, you're going to have next to no chance to get your shield on, so yeah. Just a warning. That one was bad. I just, I've stopped paying attention. This game just frustrates me too much. It's, it's, there's too much bullshit going on. There's too much bullshit with the physics engine. There's too much bullshit with the cars spinning out when they touch one weird little thing. There's too much bullshit with the AI. Sometimes they have rubber banding up the arse and sometimes they don't. And I can't figure out when they do and when they don't. Sometimes it feels... You know that thing in Mario Kart where you're, you're in front by a significant margin and you just suddenly get hit from behind with like 10 different sets of weaponry. That happens in this game too. And it can be really frustrating with that. The point where I officially gave up on playing this game at all is the tier 4 door. Due to weird as shit stuff with the physics engine, like say I clip his wheel and I go flying off the fucking side, I fire off my missile, but for some reason it comes out below me and hits me and causes me to lose the race. And just a combination of all the weirdest shit factors with the... with the game's physics engine and shit like that. All of this stuff combined is... made it so that I ended up losing that race like three or four times. And I just got absolutely sick of it. And I just gave it up. It, it just... It could be good. And to be fair, when, it, when it's all working, it is good. It's not great. Um, as I said, the track designs aren't really that memorable. And the... There is an overall lack of modes. There is some stuff I haven't shown you yet, like the... Like the battle mode. But if I'm being honest, the battle mode feels really tacked on. And the car core mode. But... Yeah, it's, the racing is supposed to be the main draw here, and the racing is decent until you start getting into all the bullshit. And then when all the bullshit starts, it becomes maddeningly unplayable.
there is some weird shit in this game too. Like, did you see how back there, there was like a little road that merged in with the other road? If you end up on that other fork, even if you're going to drive straight out back into the race, it will reset your position behind that little fork in the road. And you will lose time because of it. And that seems entirely unnecessary to do if you're facing the right direction and you're heading the right way. So I don't know why that's a thing. But it is. All these little things are just combined together to make the game a real pain. How did that happen? How did I end up driving on the wall? The, all these little things, the unmemorable track layouts combined with some really wonky physics that give the enemies a bit more advantage than they really should have when it comes to those sorts of fights. Like, the game's not meant to be, like, played car to car. It's meant to be played with all the pickups, so it's a bit weird that they can absolutely wipe the floor with you. And where did that guy come from, anyway? That wasn't a fucking boost, because when you boost, you slow down from it. Um, well, not dramatically, but you slow down from it casually. That felt like rubber banding. And that happens a lot. They just pop out in front of you with a massive burst of speed. And that was my that was my chair. And they just wipe the floor with you. It's really frustrating when they do that. I'll oh, play view to a kill, why not? I'm gonna kill them at three, that's fine. Time them at five, that's also fine. And engine power doesn't even really matter in this mode because of the way the levels are designed. Yeah, this is the oh. Yeah, this is the battle mode. So yeah, this track is definitely the most interesting track I've seen so far. Where the hell was this one in the campaign? They made me repeat the same boring one in an industrial scrapyard like three or four times in a row, but they can't pull out this one from time to time? Fuck's sake. But yeah, it's basically how it looks. You just go around and you try and find... Yeah, this one's too big. Like, is everybody so spread apart from each other? How are you supposed to even find anyone on this map? Yeah, the basic deal is you find people and you shoot them, and the person with the most points at the end of it all is the winner. I, I can't even find anybody because the map is just so... Massive. It doesn't need to be this big. The AI also seems to handle this mode really badly for some reason. Like, I'm not sure why, but they just have this annoying tendency to just get stuck on walls for a while and feel the need to just respawn themselves randomly. I'm not sure why, but they do. Oh, come on. I didn't count as hitting the pickup. Yeah, there's just a lot of minor frustrations that really build up over the time and make the game nowhere near as cool as it could have been. And that disappoints me because uh, a true sequel to Bloody Roll Cage would have been absolutely amazing, but this just doesn't feel like it. Seriously, this this map is huge. How did? No, screw it. Let me show off the one that I actually played before. That that one will be a. I believe it was the Sepa Compound, or however the hell you're supposed. You can tell I'm really not liking the game when I can't speak properly. Did you see how slow that swarm of Hydra missiles came out? You'd think that would have hit the guy immediately after I pressed the button, right? Because I was literally, like, 
point blank range, but no, they just take so long to come out and just start swarming that anything will have gone out of the way in time. It just it makes the weapons really not fun to use. Especially when the lock-on times are so long and they'll have the opportunity to get around behind a corner before you can do anything about it. Now that I've been partially damaged. Also, the lock-on is really weird. Sometimes it'll lock onto environmental objects and you can actually attack them. Sometimes they're worth points. Like, uh, there are, like, explosive barrels and things in this area that are worth points. But... There's really no point. You get more points for actually hitting people. Oh, that missile is so worthless. Not to mention your lock-ons have to be a certain distance away, but not too far away. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to lock onto them at all, and it... It's legitimately really frustrating. Anyway, you, you, you've seen enough of that. Let me show off the car core so that I can actually end this video because, God, I don't want to play this anymore. But just a shame, because I bought this way back in early access thinking, oh, this might actually stand a chance of being good. And as it turns out, I'm very, very disappointed. Right, so here's what car core is like. Most of the levels are like this. They are very simple puzzles of what to do in order to get to the goal. A lot of them are like that. Very Tragmania-esque. And that's okay, I suppose, but you have to keep in mind that there's only 19. And most of them are like that, so sure some of them might take you some time in order to actually, like, get through all of them. Just because they are relatively difficult and need some practice. And then in just, like, this, maybe this one case, maybe there's another level that is something like this. How did I miss that? Yeah, then you have this this one level, or possibly like another level that's like this or not. Where you have a bunch of the things just lying around and you have to get to them all as fast as possible in just this big area designed to help you learn the lay of the grip cars. But, yeah, it's this is the only level that's like this as far as I can tell, which is a great big shame, because you can do a fair bit more with this concept. I believe a game called Revolt, that I should do a video on one of these days, also did a mode like this, which was actually like a really cool little level, but at the same time you needed all of like the cars to get through it, because if you didn't have all the cars to get through it, well you wouldn't be able to get to some of the pickups, but at least that saved your progress. In this game you have to do it all in one shot. I should probably launch off that. That would probably give me a better... Uh, that would probably do me better in trying to get this one here. I'm not... Oh, let go of the button too early. I could have sworn I had charged it enough there. Whatever, you get the idea. I'm not going to sit around and make you watch that. So... That was a look at Grip. It had a lot of promise and the the tracks look good and the driving is mostly okay, but bullshit with the weapons, bullshit with the physics system, and just a general lack of like real wow factors outside of the ability to drive on the roof, which doesn't even get done that much because of the mediocre track designs, means that this doesn't really stick out in my memory. It'll, it'll, it'll never replace the original Roll Cage or its uh, better successor, Roll Cage Stage 2. And yeah, I, I, I don't recommend it. And this is coming from someone who bought it back in Early Access and waited for it to be finished before he really played it. So 
yeah, that's um, that's disappointing. And just go over the things that I missed. You can see my stats here, the manual and the leaderboards for certain things. That's it, more or less. So there you go. This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.